Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa salam, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. The last class we completed the discussion about um, the prohibition of praying in a masjid that was built on a grave or to pray in the graveyard or to, of course, to build the masjid on, on a, a grave or a graveyard. That's all prohibited. And the prohibition becomes more severe if the qabr, the grave, is towards the qibla. And we felt that the opinion of the Hanabila uh, that this is prohibited, totally prohibited, and the salah, according to some of them, is invalidated completely. That is the safest, based on the, uh, the, the, the wording of the ahadith, the multiple ahadith, and that, that this was the last teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. Nobody can say it is abrogated in any way. Now, now there are uh, some other places that we are supposed to avoid praying in. Um, there is a hadith. This hadith is weak when it comes to its uh, chain of narration. Uh, but the content of the hadith um, it could be valid. Some of the things, items mentioned in the hadith, that's what we will discuss today, uh, could be valid uh, <clears throat> because they are supported by other evidence from other texts. So when a hadith is deemed da'if, and that's a mistake that we frequently make. When somebody says, oh, this hadith is da'if, that is fine, which means this text, all it means is that this text, in this wording specifically, we cannot prove that the Prophet Sallallahu said it. As long as we say it's da'if, we didn't say it's fabricated. We just said that our chain that we try to trace back to Prophet Sallallahu does not fit the very strict criteria that Muslims use to attribute any saying to the Prophet Sallallahu because any saying attributed to Prophet Sallallahu is indirectly attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْهُوا إِلَّا وَحَنْ يُوحَىٰ And the worst thing is to attribute a word to, to Allah Azza wa Jal uh, that he did not say. قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهْرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقُ وَأَنْ تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِلْ بِسُطَانَ وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah in this verse graded the sins and he talked about the fawahish the, uh, which are the major sins like zina, adultery and then وَالْإِثْمَ uh, وَالْبَغْيَ uh, and also aggression against other human beings That's all, these are also major sins and then he talked about the shirk, which is even worse. But then he put, even worse than shirk. Because basically shirk is a byproduct of attributing to Allah words and things that he did not say. You follow? Uh, shirk is basically, what does shirk mean? It, if for somebody to regard something sacred that can be worshipped by, uh, besides Allah, he has to have evidence, right? And so basically, if somebody says, this person, for instance, is the son of God or he's a partner with God. Where did you get the evidence from? So basically you're attributing a lie to Allah Azza wa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never allowed you, um, uh, never never said uh, in Surah Al-Rum, I, I forgot the verse, that وَأَن تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا You're making shirk and you have no evidence that Allah has revealed to you. So the shirk is basically based on the same uh, principle of attributing to Allah a lie, basically. Now, uh, but before you run and say all the, this hadith is da'if, then we don't take its content. You have to look at the content because it may be supported by other ahadith of different wording or by general principles in the in the Sharia. Okay, that's very important. Now, this hadith that is weak when it comes to chain of narration, Prophet ﷺ, uh, according to Ibn Umar, he said the Prophet ﷺ said uh, Prophet ﷺ prohibited us from praying in seven places and he said al mazbala which is mazbala is junkyard where people throw their garbage uh, it has another name what what do you call refuse dump dump like a dump wal majzara which is the slaughterhouse wal maqbara which is the graveyard and as you see that is supported by many other hadith this part Qari'at al-Tariq means in the road where people are actually walking, actively walking, busy street. Wafil uh, Hammam, and that's supported by the hadith we read before. Hammam is the washroom, 
Um, and uh, hammam, as I mentioned, doesn't mean a toilet. Hammam is basically where people used to just take a shower. The toilet is even worse for other stronger reasons. We'll talk about that. So if hammam, it's prohibited to pray in hammam based on not this hadith, but the previous hadith we read, al-ard kulluha masjid illa al-maqbara wal hammam. That's an authentic hadith. Uh, and then he says, وفي معاطن الإبل And where the camels normally stay and drink and eat. Like uh, they don't stay in a barn. Camels are big. They stay out in open land. But they usually have a place that they, that they stay in. بتسموه إبل عربي مكان الإبل يا تبن. أنت عندكم بلادكم فيها إبل كتير يا. مربط. مربط. It's the same. What do you call the place where camels in Ethiopia? What do they call the place? Mona. Mona. Yes, they have different language, not Arabic. Yes, but so normally camels yeah, tend to stay in a place. Yeah, for sheep, for goat, they yes. have place. Exactly. And, uh, what cow, they have place. Yes. And camel too. Yeah. Exactly. Murah. Murah. Ma'atin al-ibl, marabid al-ibl. Fawqa dhahri bayti illa and on top of the Kaaba. Okay? Now let's analyze those. Mazbala means a dump where people throw garbage. First of all, يعني, yes, it, at least it's makruh could be haram because it may contain najasa. Okay, and that from other evidence, we know you shouldn't pray in a place that has najasa, something that's unclean according to uh, sharia, uh, ritually unclean. Also, it, uh, it's disgusting and dirty and we're supposed to always uh, yeah, play in a clean place. Um, but if it doesn't mount to najasa, like if somebody works, for instance, in a dump, uh, he can pray there if he cleans that area. He can pray there, but we can say that if somebody doesn't have to, uh, he has a choice. You should never pray there because it's at least makruh, could be haram if there's najasa close to where you are praying. You follow? Um, and then, so that's the mazbala, the dump. Majra is the place of slaughterhouse or place of slaughtering. Again, could be, there, there could be najasa. Uh, and uh, it's also disgusting. Same kind of uh, points that apply to the dump, apply to the, the slaughter place. Maqbara, we've talked about this in detail. It's definitely prohibited. Qari'at uh, al where people uh, walkway or a busy road. That is because you are, people are, should not be passing in front of you when you're praying. If you force people to pass in front of you, you are the one who is acquiring the sin. And it's sinful. It's, it's actually kabira to pass in front of somebody who's praying within the distance of, where, uh, you know, the mawda is sujood. Wherever he makes sujood, this is a private place for him to pray. Nobody should pass. And there's a hadith that will come that, لَوْ يَعْلَمُ الْمَارْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ الْمُصَلِّي مَا عَلَيْهِ لَكَانَ أَنْ يَنْتَظَرْ أَرْبَعِينَ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَنْ يَمُرَّ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ If the person, know, a person knows how much sin or punishment is in passing and cutting the prayer of somebody who's praying, he would prefer to wait 40 he didn't mention 40 hours, days, weeks, years. He didn't mention. He just left it open. Better than for him to pray, to pass in front of him. What is your question? Um, so if, uh, if a person walks in front of someone who's praying, if farther than from where this make this do, is it okay? He, he should avoid it as well. But if he is, has no choice, he can, as long as he's passed the point of his sujood. Now. And what about praying on the sides of the road or on the sides of the we should always have a sutra. Yeah. If you're going to pray in a place that's busy and you have no other choice, you should have something to block you and that the sutra will come. To have a barrier between you and the people uh, in the masjid, even in the masjid you should find a pole or find something to, uh, to act like a barrier between you and people who want to pass. Can this be considered a sutra? This line? No. No. no uh, uh, it, uh, there's definition of a sutra and how, how there's a whole chapter on the sutra. It should be like the elevation of Mu'akhirat um, al-Rahl. When they used to put um, on the camel, the saddle of the camel, um, they had a back see, uh, to, to rest the back. That's called Mu'akhirat al-Rahl. Because in long trips, you need something to rest your back in. So it should have the elevation of that, at least. Yes. Um, but there are some other narrations. If you can't find anything, you can put a harba, which is like a, they used to put a spear. Uh, that's in ti at times of necessity. What okay. Shoes? People do that too because sometimes when they're you know doing that outside, they just use their shoes as a suit. It's better than doing nothing. 
<laughs> because there are some narrations but I'm not sure about their authenticity. No, no, no. That's just to define. The Khutta Khattan, it's not like a barrier, but he's just defining so that people know, oh, this is where his sujood is, so I can go beyond that. But it's not really a barrier. No. What's that? The chair, of course, it's more than good. <laughs> okay, the sutra will come, guys, okay? Um, Al-Hammam is the place, uh, it's, it's prohibited not for Najas, no, for Kashf al-Awrat, because people expose their private parts in, in the Hammam. Just for that, we're not allowed to pray. So, can somebody come and say, oh, the toilet is not mentioned? <laughs> It has aura and najasa too. <laughs> so no, it's uh, definitely not. And it's ma'wa shayateen as well. Okay. Um, so hammam is also, we shouldn't pray in a hammam. And that's prohibited based on the other hadith as well, right? Um, uh, Ibn, Say, Ibn Taymiyyah says, says that, وَلَمْ يُرِئِ وَلَمْ يَرِدْ فِي الْحُشُوشِ نَصٌ خَاصٌ يَعْنَ بِالنَّهِ عَنِ الصَّلَاةِ فِيهَا لِأَنَّ الْأَمْرَ فِيهَا كَانَ أَثَرَ عِنْدَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ أَنْ يَحْتَاجِ إِلَى دَلِيلٍ That's very important. People want us to give them a text about everything and they don't want to use their mind. He says, there's no text that says, talks about toilets. They used to call it hush. Because, because it's more obvious than, it, than, it, uh, than for it to require a dalil, a text, a specific text. So, يعني, يعني, uh, the, oh, the whole Quran that talks about which means use your mind. <laughs> you don't have to... Yani, some people don't want to use their, they use their mind in everything else, but not religion. Everything has a guideline. the place where the camels stay. Now, uh, again, also, um, uh, like you mentioned the last time, uh, there are some ahadith that indicate that ibl, the camels specifically, um, there's a hadith that says, خُلِقَتْ مِنْ شَيَاطِينَ وَرَاءَ كُلِّ جَمَلٍ شَيْطَانَ Now, what this means, um, some scholars understood it literally that Allah created the camels from the, the, the from the demons. At, uh, so Allah can create whatever He wants from whatever He wants. Uh, Allah creates human beings even from earth and from plants, right? Uh, so Allah could have transformed demons into into camels. That's fine. And there's still some demons left, but <laughs> not all the demons have become camels yet. <laughs> but so it could be that. Or it could be خُلِقَتْ مِنْ شَيَاطِينَ which means that it has the qualities of the shayateen which means extreme grudge, extreme anger, extreme violence, unpredictability and that is well known in the camel. It could not be najis because you're allowed to pray while riding the camel. You're, and that's, the Prophet ﷺ used to do that all the time. So خُلِقَتْ مِنْ شَيَاطِينَ most scholars say that it has the qualities of the, those demons which I just mentioned. And basically, maybe it's just because, uh, because of these qualities, you can, you can be praying there and then the camel just bites you and, or, or kills you or something. So you shouldn't pray. Maybe it's for protection. Maybe. Or if you say it's خُلِقَتْ مِنْ شَيَاطِينَ uh, then actually, or وَرَاءَ كُلْ جَمَلٍ شَيْطَانَ um, that uh, it is related somehow to shayateen and you're supposed to avoid places that have shayateen in them, such as the hammam, and that could also be an explanation for why now. Uh, now, فوق ظهر بيت الله There's no specific text on this one. Prophet ﷺ prayed inside Bayt Allah. Okay? So some scholars said just like you prayed inside, you can pray uh, above it. Uh, so, so we don't really have a specific text above, uh, about this, but you try going on top of Kaaba and see what happens to you. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody will allow you. You can't even go inside the Kaaba. <laughs> so it's really a question that we don't have to discuss. What was the qibla direction of Prophet when he offered the salah inside? Exactly. Um, um, there's no, the text just, uh, they asked, where did he pray? He, they said between these two poles. Uh, did he maybe pray not in the quite center? And the qibla was the center of the Kaaba? Probably yes. So if the, if the awamid, the pillars are here and they had two pillars there, and the center is between those pillars, he could have prayed towards that center. Okay? Possible. Yeah, because when we do it in the... Within, I, I just cannot recall the name. The Hijr is my life. Yes. That's that way we are facing Kaaba, and that's a part of Kaaba. Yes, you are facing Kaaba, and the, the people tell you not not to pray in Hijr Ismail. You can't really pray there; they won't allow you. But uh, because it's supposed to be part of the Kaaba, but praying inside the Kaaba is not prohibited. Prophet did it. Allow, like, 
they allow you to pray in Hijr? In fact, in Makkah, they, have they allow you inside. In fact, they have made a fatwa that even after Fajr and Asr, you can now just a few. Okay, this should, should not be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem because yeah. Prophet yeah. ﷺ prayed inside. So if you, if you consider that as part of the Kaaba, of course they make it sure they put this wall so you make tawaf around it because tawaf has to be around, not within the Kaaba. That is why, but you can pray inside it. I didn't know that you're allowed actually. Also, another thing that's not mentioned here, Al-Ard al maghsuba If somebody usurps a land from somebody, he cannot pray and that's Ijma'ah. This is a consensus of the scholars. Uh, Asat of Al-Ard al maghsuba Haram bil Ijma'ah. Like somebody takes somebody's house and starts praying inside. <laughs> 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 this is a contradiction. If, if someone takes someone's land and donate it for a masjid, لا حول ولا لا حول ولا قوة لا حول ولا قوة of course not yeah. Yeah. Uh, few things that I haven't heard about is uh, you know the water for example if the place is wet yes. can a person pray on it? yes uh, as long as you don't have if the place is wet can you pray on it as long as you don't have any evidence that this water is najis it's unclean yes you can pray what if, what if you cannot there is it's so dark that you cannot see where you're going to make the sujood. So you, you don't know if it's wet or not. Maybe it's good. Oh, absolutely. The uh, Prophet Sallallahu in Layt al-Qadr, Ra'aytuni asjudu fi ma'in wateen. Uh, it rained that heavy that night. Yeah. He saw it in a vision that Layt al-Qadr would be that he would be making sujood in mud and water. Okay. And it happened on the night, uh, I, uh, I think ma'in wateen, this hadith, I think makan late 21. Can you check? I'm done with this one. Can you check? I don't think it was 27. I think it was the 21st night. Uh, and that's an authentic hadith. But yes. We have heard that you cannot pray, you cannot make sujood, and you cannot pray where you cannot see. Like it has to be. Right? No, no, exactly. That's uh, no. Anybody who says anything in religion has to bring evidence. No, uh, you can you can make sujood. They didn't have lights at the time. The masjid was total darkness. People used to go for Fajr and Isha <laughs> and not know exactly who came and who left. It was so dark. There will be light and never will get light. So what will happen when you do salat? Mm. <laughs> will you abandon the salat? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Sometimes when you're offering salat in Haram especially, mm. and the Shia people, they are just standing like this. And you don't come to know and you pass in front of them thinking that they're just standing. They're just standing. <laughs> they're doing their <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, in Haram, in Haram, um, some sometimes, sometimes it's, you can't avoid it. Exactly. Yani, see, all rulings in Islam are based on al If you're able to, uh, it was the night of uh, 21st, that was Ra'ituni Asu Fama'in Wateen. No, uh, if there's no choice and, and there's, uh, there's no way that except to pass in front of somebody, then you've lost your capability to avoid that prohibition. Yani. So, uh, but in, in Haram specifically, maybe we will research that. Some scholars said that this rule does not apply in Haram specifically because of, because of the crowdedness. Uh, it could it's almost difficult, almost impossible to do it. And the one more thing, yes, um, passing, passing in front of, that will come in a different chapter, but in general, passing in front of somebody who's praying, it's prohibited. Uh, if, uh, if there's an imam, it's prohibited to pass in front of the imam, but, but the people pray, praying behind him, it's okay. So the lines behind the imam are okay to pass uh, in front. The prohibition only applies to somebody praying alone or to the, somebody praying as an imam. But the rest of the people behind the imam, the hadith indicate that the Sahaba used to pass no problem. So what about children? Good one. Good, good question. So now we'll talk about that. A, if there is a big stuff, you can walk among people as long as you're not passing the imam? Exactly. You can pass. Yeah, exactly. Ibn Abbas did that. Okay. Yes. So why, why are we told to stop the children from you know, passing? No, and even, even, even the children, and can you stop your child from passing in front of you in, in, in the house? You can't. No, you can't. <laughs> Uh, no, you can't. No, you can't. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. The, no the, the, this prohibition only applies to mukallaf, to somebody who is legally responsible in front of Allah Azza wa Does not apply to uh, to a child or an animal. If uh, if you're praying out in the wilderness and a goat wants to pass, are you going to hit the goat? <laughs> no, it doesn't apply to children. Uh, I heard a very respected scholar uh, asked about this about children 
uh, he quoted the hadith and I liked his quotation although the hadith applies to something else قال إن, إنهم من الطوافون من الطوافين عليكم you, well, you know what this hadith applies to? No. for cat <laughs> because uh, when Prophet ﷺ was asked about the cat uh, yeah, uh, whether if it drinks from your pot does it make it najis? because no it doesn't because it's unavoidable people raise cats in the house or they have cats they're domestic animals Originally, they should be najis. Based on the rule, they should be, they should be, should be najis. Because it, uh, it, it falls under كل ذي ناب من السباع. It is uh, like a canine, what? Carniv carnivorous animals. So it should be najis. Um, and its saliva should be najis. But because it's unavoidable. And Prophet ﷺ in this hadith mentioned why uh, the Sharia gave us a concession uh, uh, and made it easy with regards to the cats because it's unavoidable. Tawafin alaykum. They're always in and out of your houses and you can't avoid them. Uh, this applies to children when it comes to salah, although the hadith talks about something totally, totally different. And this will give you an ease when you pray next time because it will disturb your salah if you're thinking, oh, my, my son ran in front of me. Should I stop him? <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll stop you, inshallah. If the goat, is, no. if the goat passes in front of you, you stop the salah, slaughter the goat, eat. <laughs> 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 okay, stop here, guys. <laughs>